All right, please join me in the opening prayer. I'm going to ask you to all mute yourself while Cynthia reads aloud, but we'll all. We're waiting for more. Okay, there it is. Okay, okay here we go. Are the words coming up onto the slide? It should. Okay. Cornerstone of our faith, do not do abandon not us when we, please, when we fall away, fall away from, from, you. from you. you. You are the, are true, the master true master of the, of the vineyard. vineyard. We are. We are here, here to, work to work in your, in your field, field and, and make, make disciples, disciples throughout, throughout the world. The world. Bring us Bring into us your kingdom, kingdom that we might, we might taste, taste the, the sweetness, sweetness of, of your mercy and, sh and share the share joy, the joy of, your of your grace. Amen. Amen.
Okay, today's gospel reading comes from Matthew 21, verses 33 through 46. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to the tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stunned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to the other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures or read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. All right. Well, um, you know, God works in amazing ways. That's all I could say. Um, in your life, have you ever had an urge to want to try something new outside of your comfort zone, but fear prevented you from doing that? Um, you know, I didn't tell Pastor Sonny this, and um, I've shared it with Judy, but for the longest time, part of me has always wanted to share a message, not necessarily at church, but anywhere in a group setting. And I think um, being inspired by hearing others give great messages that would uh, touch people all, always made me want to be like that person. But um, fear always took over. But uh, here I am. I guess the door has op given me an opportunity yeah, doors is opened and um, here I am facing that fear. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm like shaking in my boots right now. My heart's pumping and, uh, but I'm gonna attempt to give today's sermon. So um, before we do, um, let us go ahead and open up in a word of prayer right now. Oh God, uh, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the med meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, God. Uh, my rock and my redeemer. May the words that I speak come from you and you only. May the enemy not have a part of any of this message this morning. God, I submit to you now and ask that you use me as your instrument to share your word. Open the hearts of your people to receive your word. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. 
As we read today's scripture, Jesus is telling the parable about a vineyard owner and the wicked tenants. Jesus is sharing this parable because church leaders were questioning his authority. They were a bit mad at him and suspicious because they were trying to figure out who he was and why he was there. In the parable, you have this vineyard owner who rents out the vineyard to tenants for them to take care of it and their rent is actually to pay the owner with the fruit. As time goes on, the owner sends his servant to go and collect rent, but the tenants refuse to pay the rent. Not only, do, not only that, they do something even worse. Um, they, uh, you know, they beat one up, they throw rocks at another, and even kill the other servant. The owner, still wanting his rent, he decides to give the tenants a second chance and he sends even more servants to collect rent, but the same thing happens. The servants are beaten up and killed. So you'd think by now the owner is going to take some action himself and confront these tenants, but instead he sends his son thinking that they will not treat him like the others, but they will obey him and treat him with respect. Well, wrong. They do the unthinkable and they kill the son because of their own greed, thinking that maybe they'll get all the vineyard to themselves. So why would Jesus share this story about a landowner who keeps giving the tenants chance after chance in spite of what they did? At that time, you know, the leaders were upset with Jesus and they were questioning his authority, but he wanted to let them know how God gives them second chances and third chances and even more than that. In the story, you read that the tenants send his son to go and collect rent, but actually gets killed over it. Now, if you didn't pick up on this, uh, the vineyard owner is compared to God and the son is compared to Jesus. God sent his son to die on the cross for all of our sins, but how many times do we reject God and keep nailing him, keep nailing Jesus to the cross? How many times do we mess up, but God shows his unending love for us and his patience? In this parable, we were to think of ourselves as the tenants into or if we were to think of ourselves as the tenants in today's time, think about it. You know, God has placed us in the vineyard. He has given us responsibility over things in our lives, and we are to go out and produce fruit, to go out and make disciples of all nations. So in our lives, what does that vineyard look like? Uh, for those who work, um, how can you produce fruit in the workplace vineyard? You know, um, for those who don't know, I'm a teacher and um, I've been teaching for 24 years now. And each year I have 180 days to produce fruit with the students I'm responsible for. I may not talk about God or share the gospel, but my actions speak louder than words. Do my actions show God's love and patience? Do I educate the students the best that I can and prepare them to be the future learners and good citizens of our community. I can tell you, I mess up all the time. Uh, students, they test our you know, teachers' patience all the time. Um, you can ask Vicki, you can ask Kathy, you know, they're teachers and um, they're always, yeah, students are always uh, testing our patience. But does God give us a second chance and a third chance to make a difference? Absolutely. He re reminds me of his love and for me to love my students the way he loves me. So what can you do to produce fruit in your work vineyard? For those who are retired, how do you produce fruit in your vineyard? In my personal life, um, what's my vineyard? Um, God's given me life and to be responsible over it and to take care of my life. Do I follow his commandments and love thy neighbor as myself? Do I take care of my life the way he wants me to? Do I eat healthy? Do I exercise? Do I live the Christian life that he calls me to do on a daily basis? 
Um, you know, when I really think about that, I fall so short of God's glory all the time. I mean, people are always telling me, Cynthia, you need to take care of yourself, you know, because um, you're no good. If you're not if you're not taking care of yourself, what good are you to others? And um, when I go astray in my faith, you know, I know God gives me chance after chance to come back to him. He shows his grace, his mercy and patience all the time. So what does your personal vineyard like, or what does your personal life vineyard look like? How are you producing fruit? I'm in church. Uh, all of us here on Zoom have a part of Centenary. Uh, centenary is the vineyard God has placed us in. As the quote unquote tenants, how are we taking care of the Centenary vineyard? Are we like those teachers listening to Jesus, questioning authority, letting our own agendas and pride get in the way of our ministry, or are we producing fruit? As a church body, are we spending time in God's word and in prayer, asking God to use us to be a light to others and to make disciples? Um, you know, there was a story I was gonna share last week and I got, I don't know why I got shy and I didn't share it, but maybe there's a reason why, because um, I'm sharing the story now. So uh, two weeks ago, you know, I went to a live worship service and I had shared about this and the sermon was about being the salt and light of the earth. And in that sermon, the pastor, he mentioned about, uh, he mentions how people are questioning themselves. How can they make a difference in the darkest of times as we experience this COVID period? He reminded us that when it's the most darkest, that's when the light shines the most. And if you really think about it, if you're like in a pitch black room with no windows and you lit a candle, that light would be so bright. So he reminded us even being sheltered at home and this period being the darkest times, we still can be a light and make a difference. And so, um, you know, it was interesting because that week um, he ended up going in into emergency surgery and um, on Facebook, he had shared about the nurse that was working with him and she wasn't a Christian and she only been to church once, but somehow God gave him clarity after surgery and he got in a conversation with her and God, uh, or got in a conversation with her about God in the hospital room. And, you know, it was crazy, but he said, God just gave him clarity, um, even though he was groggy, groggy after his surgery. And she ended up accepting Christ right there in the, in the hospital room. So he really emphasized that we all can be a light and we can produce the fruit in the darkest of times. Um, in church, we talk about being the salt and the light of the world. Um, but are we also encouraging each other through worship? Are we building each other up to equip one another for ministry? Um, if God was to zoom bomb us right now in the service and say, surprise, I'm here to collect rent. Will the fruit we give to him be healthy fruit or will they be rotten fruit or will there be no fruit to give him at all? If your answer is healthy fruit, we give praise to God. But if your answer is rotten fruit or no fruit to give, then what can we do to change that God, to change that as God gives us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance to build his ministry? So um, I encourage and I challenge all of you to, to try something new this week to help grow the fruit in the centenary vineyard. Call up a friend you know, pray for them. Join the Wednesday evening prayer meeting at 7 p.m. Let us be a house of prayer that prays for our country, for our community, for our church, for each other. Um, you know, I encourage you to join the Thursday night evening Bible studies with Marilyn Obori or the Sunday morning Bible studies with Dennis. Let us be a church body studying God's word together. Let us be a church where Centenary's vineyard overflows with fruit. So um, yeah, I just encourage everyone to think about that. So, um, you know, we are tenants in God's vineyard and I challenge you this week to reflect and think about the vineyards God's placed you in, in your life. What can we do to take responsibility over all the vineyards we have been placed in? You know, we make mistakes all the time. We always fall short of God's glory. 
but God gives us chance after chance. He's giving us second chance, third chances, fourth chances. He's so patient with us. So if we honor God and not reject him and all the chances he gives us, we will experience an abundance of blessings. We will produce the fruit that he wants to see and collect. And we will build the kingdom that we are responsible for. So thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. God has blessed us and blessed you. You have the talent, Cynthia. You could do it again. <laughs> nope. <laughs> And truth, truth be told, Cynthia did not get this assignment until six o'clock last night. So she did a marvelous job and thank you so much. I, I do have to say, you know, uh, the, the funny thing is um, during the whole midst of yesterday's texting, uh, um, I don't know, Judy was supposed to do the sermon. I don't know how she got out of this. And so, and, uh, so uh, things got twisted around. I was only supposed to be liturgist, so I, I don't know what happened here. But uh, yeah, but we worked together and um, hopefully God was uh, glorified through today's sermon or message and service. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let us continue our service with our response hymn, An Outcast Among Outcasts. During our time of giving, I hope that you will all uh, consider an additional offering for World Communion Sunday. United Methodist churches observe World Communion Sunday on this first Sunday in October. The observance focuses the attention of the United Methodists on the universal and inclusive nature of the church. Offerings collected in the United Methodist Churches on World Communion Sunday are used to fund scholarships for young scholars and seminarians. The, um, the don 
nations equip racial and ethnic minority students in the United States and international students to transform the church and communities. us so much. We have offered back such small amounts in return. We have often served you as a part-time follower, giving a fraction of our time and resources to your mission and overwhelming share to our own indulgences. We strive to do better, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead pressing on to the goal of serving Christ with all our being. In his name we pray. Amen. And now <clears throat> we will continue during our time of love feast. And will you all join me in the prayer when it gets posted? Father of earth and heaven, thy hungry children feed. Thy grace be to our spirits given, that true immortal bread. Grant us and all our race in Jesus Christ to prove. The sweetness of thy pardoning grace, the manna of thy love. Amen. Judy, you are muted. Our scripture reading for our love feast comes from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. 
so that at so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend or should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father amen and so will you share with me as others around the world share Okay, I apologize. I went out of order, and, and but we'll get back on track. Today we are blessed to have um, Anne and Angel with us today. Um, let me just give a quick background, and then Anne can fill in the other parts of it. In partnership with the First United Methodist Church of Los Angeles, Kit City Hope Place was launched in the fall of 2008. As Kit City South Park, an after school program for children and youth between six and 17 years old was started. It has evolved into a year round program extended to high school and college students. And we are really blessed to have Ann Hawthorne, who is the executive director of Urban Foundation and who has been the leader behind Kid City. And I can't believe it's been a dozen years now, but we have seen the growth of this project and hallelujah, Ann. And when you unmute your uh, microphone, take it away. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Judy, and thank you everyone for being here. I, um, I have to say that Centenary, you know, I do have uh, opportunities to go to various churches and um, speak about Kid City and so on. But I, I mean, I honestly, I, I never get filled with so much love as I do when I come to Centenary. It just, it. You all, I, I do think this is one of the most incredible churches and um, I'm so grateful because we have been able to grow our program at Kid City largely, largely because of Centenary. And, you know, so many of you have contributed in so many different ways and supported our students and welcomed our students to your bazaar um, in May and We've come to your church to do different events. I mean, it's it's really, to me, I feel that Centenary is what a church should be. It's absolutely um, just the, the most wonderful experience we've had getting, getting to know you. And I know how um, deeply some of you reached out um, during times when we were really afraid for um, immigrant families, many of you reached out um, because of um, events in your own history that um, that just, it was just been an extraordinary partnership. And I only just feel sorry that we've really got to do this every year, just come and, and touch base with you. But anyway, um, I'm here mainly to um, introduce Angel and after Angel speaks, I might, if I have a minute, I'll, I'll fill you in on some things happening in, in our future. But uh, one of the things that um, we're, we're, has happened more and more with every passing year is the students who've been part of Kid City are circling back around as volunteers, as interns, as mentors, and just they keep coming around. And Angel is one of those people. Angel, um, is a student at UC Riverside. And he's also been an intern. I think this is his third summer. Um, one thing you may not know about Angel, he's, well, he's a, a student, I think in biology, is that right? Yeah, biology. 
but also just has an incredible voice and has come to First Church to sing and things at our events and, and so on. So um, just if you, if, we, if you ever have a chance, try to um, get a chance to listen to Angel because he, he really is a very gifted vocalist. This summer, um, Angel helped out with our Splash of LA and then um, I was lucky enough to have him for a few hours of his internship. And he's gonna talk to you about the care packages that we put together with Carolyn's help. And again, just wanna thank everybody who contributed and who helped bring the items together. We were able to get those care packages out to, we're getting them out to a hundred students, but I'll let Angel tell you a little bit more about that. And, and great to see you everyone. Uh, yeah, thank you, Anne, for introducing me here. You're so kind with your words. Uh, it really means a lot. Um, I also want to thank all of you guys for having me here today. Um, it was a great experience to, to um, wake up and have this experience on a Sunday. Um, so a little bit more background about me and Kid City. Um, and so I joined Kid City my junior year of high school, um, and they helped me out with my college applications and everything. And then as soon as I got to college and I was able to participate in the internship program, I did so. And so I've been an intern for the past three years. Um, and I helped out with Splash of LA the first two years, uh, this year as well, but it was a little different considering how everything was online. Um, and so for the past two years as well, um, every year that I've been an intern, I've gotten a college uh, a bag from, from your guys' church uh, and from Kid City. Um, and so it, it's meant a lot to me. Um, most of the time, I just consider it as like a good way of, of reminding yourself that there's other people rooting for you like while you're in college, because sometimes you forget, you know, that there's just so many people that are supporting you from corners that you didn't even know were there. Um, and so this year, um, you know, considering that everything was online, it was, I, I had it in the back of my mind, like I was wondering if they were going to do the college backs this year again. And um, it's actually funny because Anne had me doing calls to donors. And so I actually got on the phone with Carolyn, who I got to know a few years back when she would help out with the college bags. And so um, when I spoke to her and I gave her thanks for her donations to Kid City, I actually asked her like, oh, what, what ended up happening to the college bags? And she told me that she tried to reach out, but there was just a miscommunication because of the, um, you know, with, with the transition to everything being online. And so um, I helped set that up and we were able to get the college bags out th this year. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a great experience. You know, usually I just receive the bags and then this year I actually got to be um, on the other side, you know, making them and asking students what exactly they would need for uh, college and stuff. And so that was a great experience. Um, you know, and again, considering how everything is online, you know, it was just a different uh, a ballpark because, you know, everything changes because we're not really in class anymore. So it's like the things that we may need are not the same. Um, and so it was a little bit difficult trying to get a consensus of what exactly students were asking for this year. Um, and we try to get them that, um, the top two things I think were the blue light glasses, which were really hard to get, but I'm so glad that we got them as well as the webcam cover. Um, and yeah, so I mean, it's just it's just so great to get these uh, care packages every year. I mean, like I said, um, it's great to know that we're supported from many different lanes and from many different people. And so yeah, I'm so appreciative. And then thank you again for letting me be a part of that process. It was great. Um, I don't know, uh, Anne, if you have anything else to add. Um, thank you so much, Angel. Um, I think you can all hear in our voices just how much this means. And one other thing is, um, Every, every time we, you give us the bags, there's always a note attached from Centenary. And Carolyn wrote the most beautiful note this year. And it just, uh, one of the things that, uh, we always ask students what they need. And one of the things they always say they need are words of encouragement. So I just, you know, we think about things, but we don't wanna underestimate what those words of encouragement means. And um, just real quick, I also wanted to let you know that we are doing well. We are struggling a little bit because um, as you know, I, you may know, some of you may know that a large part of our income has come from First United Methodist Church of LA and like all churches, they're struggling uh, right now. And First Church is struggling quite a lot because they've lost their income um, from the parking lot that we rent out. I, I imagine Centenary is going do something similar. So um, while our program is going strong and doing really well, when our staff has left, we've, we've lost um, 
one full-time and two part-time staff to graduate school. So celebrate celebrate that because we're very thrilled that our students, are, our staff is going on to do bigger and better things. And I always have told them, you know, go out, get your teaching credential, get your counseling credentials and go back into the schools and bring that spirit that you loved at Kid City, bring it with you to wherever you go. But at the same time, we haven't been able to, well, I haven't felt comfortable replacing those staff with new positions when the world is so uncertain right now. So while we're doing really well and we've got some good prospects for next year and we will be here for next year, um, I, if you haven't heard from us in a while, just please be patient and give me a call. Just give me a call. Y'all have my email and my phone number. Hopefully just give me a call. I'd be more than thrilled to, to hear from you if uh, you're trying to get through like Poor Carolyn and poor Vicki um, are so persistent. So do that and just know that um, the United Methodist Church also, I just want to um, give a shout out to UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief. They gave us $25,000 in May to distribute to families and students who were in need. And we were able to help over a hundred families with um, groceries and utility bills and that kind of thing. And that, you know, every right now, every little bit helps. And we were just really, really blessed to be able to do that. And we're so grateful for our connection to the United Methodist Church. So I'll stop there and I'll hang around. Thank you all so much for everything. Well, thank you very much. And so will you all unmute yourselves as we pass the piece? Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. With you. We'll close with our final hymn, Jesus' Hands Work. Kind hands. For the benediction today. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our parent who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Amen. Amen. Have a good week everyone and prayers to you Pastor Sonny. <laughs>